So if you have watched the channel for any length of time, uh, you would have seen this boat, uh, the Sportsman, and what condition it was in when we first got it into the shop. It had been left out in the desert of California down south there for about 30 years. The engines were completely taken apart. The boat was upside down, plywood on the bottom. Somebody had taken the boat apart uh, most of the way and tried to repair some frames as far as we could see and then just completely gave up on the project. The boat was uh, brought here about a year and a half ago and um, basically it's taken us that long to get to this point. So like I said the boat was upside down when we got it and um, we're gonna be end up replacing almost every single stick of wood in this boat unfortunately really there's not much that can be saved. Um, so we replaced all the frames, we replaced the keel and the stem and then plumbed that. You know, we have a system where we stabilize it uh, with uprights on the stringers and then make sure that that nose is plumb and the boat is square. And then we build around that. And then we replace the stringers. Now the stringers are pretty unique in this boat as you can totally tell that they're not straight. They actually have a bow to them. And that is on the drawing. They uh, show that on the drawing. Now, where the engines sit, they've got to be 22 and a half inches on center. That's pretty much standard for any boat that Chris Craft ever built. So you could see how what condition the wood was in when the boat came in here. And this was actually upside down, so this was somewhat protected. And it's in this bad a condition. Now, this is your shear line, what they call your shear line. And this is like what your rub rail will sit against. And that line has to be just right. You know, that is what's pleasing to the eye. And so it's taken Zach and Kelly uh, some time to figure that out. We've went through and we've looked at the drawing and measured everything out and made sure that it matched what we're doing. And then after that, it's pretty much just visual. You've got to see if there's any humps or any dips and work those out until you get a nice transition. And on this boat, it transitions from the deck and then it sweeps down. Most boats comes from the deck and rolls right around to the transom with the shear line. This one actually comes kind of flat and then it dips down right about uh, a third of the boat so that was a little tricky to figure out but i think we nailed that uh, the forward deck is almost completely framed out um, and then we'll get the dash in there uh, and then he's focusing right now onto the shear line after we get that clamped down and bolted into place we will then start to work on the aft deck so the set of drawings that we have came from the Mariner's Museum and um, they actually came in 8 by 11 form. So they were pretty small. And then so I took them to a copy center and then I made sure that when they were blown up, actually this one is blown up 102 uh, percent, that it came out to be one inch equals one foot. And so on our ruler right here, one inch equals one foot. We can then figure out uh, some of these measurements, like this transom. Without deck planking, because that boat doesn't have deck planking on it. And so we need to be at 
uh, two feet 11 inches. And so then we can start building off of that and make sure of what we have is that measurement. And that goes for from the water line to the top of the shear. Uh, so you just, it's nice to have them just to recheck your measurements and just to make sure that you got everything uh, in the right shape. So not every boat has drawings. Um, they tried to save as much as they could when the factory closed down and they moved all the paperwork and stuff out of the factory. All that stuff went to Mariner's Museum, but some of that stuff did not exist when they got all the paperwork. And so uh, if you do order pictures or hull cards from the Mariner's Museum, you may or may not be able to get the drawings. So what's kind of cool about this is this boat here is a 1950. Some of these drawings are earlier than that. And what we found out is they actually changed the measurements of the transom in 1949. So if, if you have a 25 foot sportsman, that's a 1946, it has a little bit different measurements and the different measurements from this drawing, because this drawing was late 49, uh, than the earlier boats. Also, those earlier boats were Honduras mahogany up until about 1948, early 49. This one is a 1950, so, and this one is Philippine mahogany, which is actually kind of nice because um, genuine mahogany and Honduras mahogany is really hard to get right now and really good, clean stuff. This is red morante uh, that it's skinned with. The planking is red morante. The frames are actually African. Just, we saved a little bit of cost there. They're gonna be painted. Uh, same rot properties, you don't have to worry about that. Same pretty much weight. It's just a little bit less expensive to make your frames out of African than Philippine mahogany. So we have a lot of the interior. Um, we have some of the inside ceiling boards, uh, some of the uh, engine box there. There's two of them because this is a twin engine. We have some of the seat bases and we're just going to have to go through that stuff and lay it all out. Once we get the back deck on this boat, that's what we'll do. We'll get all that stuff down, see where it goes, and then start building the interior. We have the bottom painted, uh, correct copper bronze. We have the sides fared out, so they're on and glued down and fared out. We need to do these two planks right here, but we also need to get this shear in to where we can get a nice plank placement and get these planks on. Um, and then it's just basically focusing on the deck. Uh, you can see down here what the shape of the deck is in. It's pretty rough, but there's enough information there that we can figure it out. So that is the update on the 1950 25 foot sportsman. We're going to keep plugging along here and hopefully in another few weeks we can have this back deck on. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for more stuff. We're going to have a couple more things teaching videos coming up. If you want to support the channel that would be greatly appreciated. You can do that by just hitting the like button, hitting that subscribe button and financially if you want to help support the channel then there's the Patreon and you can join Patreon. So uh, you can find that information at the end of the video. Thanks again, we'll see you back here. Go on my office.